But I think from a retirement standpoint, you think about protecting against inflation in a few different ways. First, you think about your own spending patterns and do a little bit of um, research, a little bit of reconnaissance on what your spending has looked like, what categories you tend to spend on. One thing we know about older adults is that they spend more on health care than the general population. Mm -hmm. we, we have historically seen health care inflation rise at a faster clip than the general inflation rate. So take a, just take a close look at your spending habits. In some areas, you may be a loser like health care. Uh, in other areas like energy, costs, you may be a winner because you're not commuting, you're not driving as much as you were when you were working. So kind of just think about your spending categories and then think about your income sources in retirement. So if you are, you know, on the really positive end of the spectrum from the standpoint of inflation and you have sort of a, a, a pension that provides you full inflation protection and that pension is supplying you with all the income that you need, well, you're in great shape. And then at the other end of the spectrum would be the retiree who doesn't have any of those in inflation protected income sources and has a really safe portfolio that he or she is pulling from for all of the income. Well, that's someone who's really vulnerable sure. because their purchasing power is just going to be gobbled up by inflation. Most of us in retirement fall somewhere in between right. those two poles where they, we have some inflation insulation. If we're getting Social Security, for example, we might not agree that the little increase that we get on our Social Security benefit is sufficient, but that portion of our income is inflation protected. It's really the portfolio that we need to concern ourselves with to make sure that that portion of our withdrawals is in some fashion insulated against inflation. So when we think about protecting a portfolio against inflation, we think about a couple of key categories. One would be to make sure that you have stocks in your portfolio, because even though stocks aren't any sort of direct hedge against inflation, when we look at the asset classes with the ability to out earn inflation over time, stocks very much fit the bill. Whether they will do so over the next couple of years or the next five years, open question. But over longer time periods, we see a pretty good ability for stocks to beat inflation. So you want to make sure you have stocks. But on the fixed income side, I think it's also worth looking at a category called treasury inflation protected securities or mm -hmm. sometimes called tips right. and tips are issued by the treasury but they have a little bit of spin on the ball in terms of offering an inflation adjustment to your principal value which in turn, in turn affects your yield when inflation trends up so my colleagues at Morningstar Investment Management put together asset allocation programs. Within a, a person's fixed income allocation, they typically recommend, a retired person's fixed income allocation, they typically recommend like a 20 to 30% allocation to mm -hmm. treasury inflation protected securities. Mm -hmm. The idea is that you are protecting the purchasing power on, on that portion of your portfolio. Some retirees might say, well, why not just have my whole fixed income allocation in tips? Well, the risk is that that's not very diversified. Right. So even though treasury bonds and treasury inflation protected securities are the most credit worthy bonds that you can find, um, they tend to be somewhat interest rate sensitive. So you'd probably want to diversify to include some corporate bonds, some agency backed bonds, some other securities to ensure that your portfolio, uh, your fixed income portfolio is a little bit better diversified. But those are some of the key asset classes I would think about. Some of the other asset classes that people might add would, would include things like commodities or commodities tracking exchange traded funds, mm -hmm. precious metals, either um, a, a, an ETF like GLD or perhaps some of the precious metals mining mm -hmm. companies. And here I would recommend owning some type of a mutual fund or an ETF exchange sure. traded fund that does this. And finally, real estate, I think, is another asset class that historically has shown some ability to protect against inflation. And the reason is pretty intuitive that when rates are increasing and as a REIT owner, you're able to participate and benefit from that. Well, that's also the time when inflation is typically 
typically running up broadly. So those are some sort of non-core assets that I might think about, but again, keeping them to very small positions because they're quite volatile as standalone holdings. You definitely don't want to have giant positions in a category like commodities or precious metals. Hey, Stan the Annuity Man here. Did you like that little taste of my podcast, Fun with Annuities? Hey, if you want to see the full version, click the link and watch the whole darn thing. Remember, fun with annuities, live in the reality, not the dream.